It's January 2017. This is Jason Ingram and I'm doing a video log showing my progress of basically making a career out of the multimedia stuff that I've been doing for a long time. So it's about time that I start actually making a living out of this stuff and with my level of functionality it's a trip. <laughs> In fact uh, it's basically the same thing that happens to me every time I try to launch out and do a bigger project or do something I've never done or do something I've failed at a whole bunch. And it's uh, it, it definitely takes a lot of self-care and self-maintenance. And all that stuff can get exhausting, too, because... Uh, I am so high maintenance. <laughs> I carry a bag with me around everywhere I go, and it's got everything from band aids to pain pills to snacks, and I mean and anything I could possibly need because I I don't like to leave the house. In fact, sometimes I'm afraid to. And and uh, lately, I think the reason why I've been staying home so much is that we have almost a foot of snow outside, and it's to, just something we don't ever get like that in in Portland. Very rarely. And uh, it's been sticking for a long time, and I had to put uh, snow chains on my van, which I've never done before. And it's so funny how something as simple as putting tire chains on it can be so hard for, so, for, for a lot of us that live with mental illnesses and various types, especially when you have like a, like more than one you're dealing with, like especially the anxiety and stuff. And the fear of the unknown is just like, <laughs> it's just amazing how your body can react to things that aren't real. And fears of perceived threats can manifest in your body as if they are real threats. And because uh, perceived threats never go away because they don't exist in the first place, there's still this perceived threat that is still draining your body of adrenaline and the resources in order to live day by day and instead focusing on parts of your brain and your body to prepare you to run away from danger, to fight it, or to play dead, like to freeze or something like that. And uh, my body is, is very often, especially with panic attacks, being put in that mode and it's really hard to tell the body to stop. And vigorous exercise is one of those things that helps uh, because uh, when, you're, uh, when your heartbeat gets um, to the point when you break a sweat, and um, for me, I go into exhaustion very easy. So if I do something to get me exhausted, then my body says, phew, I'm done with whatever threat that that was. So that's that's one of the things. I'm not always in a, in a place where I can do vigorous exercise. Sometimes I do vigorous exercise and I can't even break a sweat uh, because my system is going off so intensely. So um, yeah, <laughs> just when I'm studying for my homework at this class, the same things that come up for me when I was a kid and trying to do homework and losing my mind, losing my ability to focus, losing my ability to read. And it was terrifying. And then that would just snowball into, oh my God, what's happening? My mind just doesn't work. And then that produces more anxiety, which makes my mind work even less. And so that's when I usually have to put it down and I have to try another approach or I just try it again or maybe I do it in little installments and if I do maybe a page or two of homework and I start to really really get um, nervous then I can put it down and um, do other tasks um, and then I procrastinate a lot too because it is so um, traumatic sometimes to do these simple tasks and not being able to do them it really, really gets frustrating. And so um, there are times like I was talking about in another video log, that there are times to fight the depression and say, I have to get the disappointment. I've missed two of them. I really need to do this. I'm going to just kind of fake it till I make it sort of a thing. And then there's only a certain amount of time 
before you're going to burn out. And uh, so there are times to fight it, there are times to go with it. And the same thing with mania, too. Um, sometimes mania is a good time to just allow yourself to get a lot of things done. But if the bipolar manic episode is to the point where I can't even focus, where especially if there's irritability involved and other factors to where I can't function at all. And the only thing is to like get on my bicycle and ride for five miles or something or uh, do something to take my mind off of it. Sometimes I watch movies. Um, sometimes, like, like lately, I've just really been hibernating a lot. And I do this every January anyways, so it's not something that I should beat myself up about uh, because I... I, aside from my sleepy days, I, I do get, you know, at least one or two tasks done. Like today was great because uh, I was able to finish putting together some video clips for this um, mental health nonprofit. Um, and that was good because I really hope that I can be involved in their fundraising. It's just very hard for me to work with others. Very, very difficult. Uh, and so I think I need to take a class on like nonviolent communication or something like that too. Because uh, the more I work with people, the more I try to be successful, and the more I, I just try to put myself out there, um, I seem to lose patience with working with others very quickly. And especially when uh, the more I realize how low in status I am compared to other people in my line of work, it is very discouraging. In fact, I talked to a friend of mine today for three hours, <laughs> And he's a guy I've been wanting to produce an album with, and he's just amazing. And he's just complaining about the very same things that I was going through. And it's basically, if you are going in a certain area of work, whether you're working with your hands or you're doing this or that, skills are very important, and organization and things like that. But in, in entertainment, the main thing that people seem to be successful at is just fucking popularity. And it happens to do very little with how they treat others, how they pay others, how honest they are, how skilled they are, how experienced they are. And unfortunately, I'm in an industry that it's okay to discriminate, too, against disabled people and stuff. So, Because I was thinking about the stuff that's happened to me, um, just clubbing and nightclubs and things like that. I thought... <laughs> I mean, if I was um, actually employed working for these people, um, they could never get away with the stuff that they did over the last couple of years. And it's amazing that people seem to tolerate that when it has to do with live music. It's, and it, it is true, in, in small scales and in large scales, uh, the music industry and the entertainment industry um, really does have a lot of bullies and it is really really intense for people who really do have a lot of vision and skill they put a lot of time and effort a lot of inspiration into their work and they just sit back and they watch these popular people um, make a living out of it because it takes a lot of people a lot to, to be familiar with your work and to actually uh, attend your shows and buy your albums and things like that. And in order to do that, um, you know, there has to be something way more than marketing, which is word of mouth. And word of mouth, you know, comes from basically people with uh, a high social status and that know how to play the game. And that's typically how it works. And so hearing this guy talk about this stuff and trying and trying so hard... <laughs> to build a music career and he is so talented and it just broke my heart because everything he was saying was like yeah i feel the same exact way that's what i've experienced i think the stuff i've experienced was a lot worse and um in, in most of the ways but there was some things that were really sad uh about how much effort he's put into his career and he does um, a lot of stuff i don't do he has a solo career which is awesome so it's been very sad lately, and uh, I'm still trying to just kind of press in and do my best. And, um, um, yeah, <laughs> so trying to encourage myself. Uh.
but it's going to work out, so just going to keep at it.